Lada, most doctors think it is a Russian car. Am I type 1 diabetes or type 2? Excuse the pun, but think outside the box. Lada stands for latent autoimmune diabetes of adults. It is a form of diabetes with features of both type 1 and type 2 and has therefore been termed type 1.5. In Japan, the synonym used is slowly progressive insulin-dependent type 1 diabetes mellitus. Always consult your doctor or health care professional. I got my diabetes early in 1984, 40 years ago. I was just 29 years old by then. Diabetes type 2 is not just about insulin resistance, diet, and a sedentary lifestyle. Type 1.5 diabetes is similar to type 2 diabetes, but pancreas gets destroyed slowly creating a similar to type 1. Type 1.5 diabetes tends to be diagnosed later, around the age of 30. It shares similarities with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, as it typically initiates in adulthood. About 10 to 15 percent of cases diagnosed as type the second of may be attributed to type 1.5 diabetes. Consequently, it is crucial to recognize that a significant portion of individuals with diabetes 1.5 may have an autoimmune condition rather than it being solely linked to poor dietary habits and lifestyle. Assumption is typically 1.5 diabetes or larder people also destroy the cells that produce insulin. Examining the characteristics of type 1.5 diabetes reveals that it shares similarities with type 1 but emerges in adulthood. Unlike other autoimmune conditions, it doesn't manifest during childhood but tends to develop later in life, potentially influenced by environmental factors or infections. Interestingly, individuals diagnosed with type 1.5 diabetes often defy the stereotype associated with diabetes. They are not typically obese, maintain relatively healthy eating habits, engage in regular exercise, and present a lean and fit appearance. Despite these seemingly healthy lifestyles, they still grapple with diabetes, prompting the need to investigate autoimmune conditions in such cases. Identifying type 1.5 diabetes in individuals initially diagnosed with adult onset diabetes involves a careful examination of their medical history and symptoms. This approach ensures a more accurate diagnosis, distinguishing it from other forms of diabetes. In standard blood tests, an assessment for autoimmune conditions can be conducted. The initial set of antibodies to examine includes GAD65 antibodies, which serve as biomarkers for autoimmune central nervous system CNS, disorders and are also prevalent in non-neurological autoimmune diseases. In standard blood tests, an assessment for autoimmune conditions can be conducted. The initial set of antibodies to examine includes GAD65 antibodies, which serve as biomarkers for autoimmune central nervous system CNS, disorders and are also prevalent in non-neurological autoimmune diseases. The second antibody to consider is the islet cell antibody, followed by the examination of zinc transporter antibodies. These three markers play a crucial role in determining whether an individual is dealing with typical type 2 diabetes, potentially linked to poor lifestyle choices such as excessive sugar consumption, lack of exercise, and a sedentary lifestyle. You may say, I work out, I try to eat well, but I have diabetes. Probably much more simple tests are 1. Fasting blood sugar, 2. C-peptide level and 3. Insulin level. But you need to track them maybe one year apart to see whether your insulin production or C-peptide production has changed over the year without a change to medication and lifestyle. That indicates that your beta cells are less active than a year ago, so, type 2 diabetes management is just eating less cabs and exercising, however, it is worth checking whether the original diagnosis is wrong. The latter type of diabetes will continue to progress because it's an autoimmune condition. You may have to address the autoimmune condition by finding the triggers. One last thing I need to mention is the amount of pancreatic beta cells at birth. This is affected by several factors. 1. Hereditary, 2. Nutrition, health and supporting environment for the mother during pregnancy, and 3. Nutrition and care received during early childhood. This is not medical advice and you need to consult your healthcare professional and discuss. Do not forget to click the like button and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching this video. Up above you see a video related to health, it will be more helpful to you and your family. See you in the next video.